Hello. Take a look at this render. It's not bad by any means, but it definitely has that CG look. But why? I could increase the resolution of the textures and the HDRI, add surface imperfections and post-processing, and sure, it does look better, but it's still missing something. So what's the one rule I follow when looking for photorealism in Blender? The one thing I keep in mind when making a scene like this? The answer is chaos. The real world is chaotic. It's random. Even looking around the room you're in, I bet there's hundreds of little things breaking up the perfectness of the setting. Take a look at this reference photo. You can see bits of paint peeling away, random discoloration, leakage, and the wood is warping from water damage and age. If you zoom into the floor, you can see hundreds of tiny little specks, pieces of dirt, dead leaves, and so on. So how can we implement chaos in our renders? Let's try a couple of things. If you watch Rick and Morty, you probably remember the scene where Rick shows Morty what true level feels like. This is basically what CGI renders are. We create these perfect lines and straight edges that simply do not exist in the real world. So let's fix it. Once we have a basic scene blocked out, subdivide the geometry a few times and enter sculpt mode. Use the grab brush on a low strength and just randomly push and pull vertices around. We're breaking up all of these perfect straight edges and introducing chaos one brush stroke at a time. We can also rotate the objects in the scene slightly. You'd be surprised how much of a difference this makes. Here's the before and after. It's subtle, but these small changes really add up. This plaster material is much too clean. We can try a different seamless one, but in a scene like this I prefer using image textures. A real photograph essentially snapshots the chaos of the real world. We get all of the grime, leakage and imperfections baked into the image. When we replace our existing PBR texture with it, we break up the perfectness of the scene with very little effort. The same thing applies to the wood floor, and the skirting. As long as we align the UVs properly, we don't get any tiling. This is probably my favourite discovery of the last few months. Take a look at this photo. I took this of an old map we keep in the basement. It's been stepped on thousands of times, and all of those little pieces of garbage and grass are caked into the fibres. Because the material is black, I can take the image in Accreta and crush the black values to create an alpha mat. Now I can import this image onto a plane in Blender. Plug the colour into the transparency socket of the principled BSDF, and voila, a layer of garbage I can throw over any flat surface. If I duplicate this around the floor a few times, I get all kinds of random chaotic noise, just like the image I showed you earlier. I can select all of these planes, hit F3, and search for randomized transform, then adjust the Z rotation to prevent repetition. Take a look around your house to see if you can find any similar objects to photograph, and create your own chaotic overlays. When working with scenes like this, it's important to think about how somebody might inhabit it. How many times have you thrown a shirt or piece of plastic into a pile somewhere, off to the side of your bedroom? Bottles? That one annoying broken stool you keep forgetting to throw away? Old backpacks or shoes? We don't want these objects on any section where characters might be walking, but they can be strategically placed off to the sides to break up the form and add complexity to the scene. We want our audience to really believe that somebody lives here. This piece of the puzzle usually takes the longest but it also makes a big difference. Finally, we can throw some objects in front of or around our light source to make the shadows more interesting. We can also use this method to sculpt our light and draw our viewer's attention to a specific point in the scene. Gobos are another great tool for this. They're basically flat planes with images cut out from them. The light passes through the cutout to create interesting shadows you normally can't get with a standard lighting setup. Here's the final before and after. These few simple techniques really help to elevate the believability of a scene, but they're things you might not think of unless you're really studying your references closely. If you find this content valuable, please like and subscribe so I know to make more. Thanks everyone. I hope you found the video helpful.